A black-clad figure dashes through an extravagant casino, carrying with him an extraordinary treasure. Guided by his teammates, the masked thief fights off bizarre monsters as he tries to escape from the casino. Unfortunately, the thief is cornered. He tries to flee by jumping through a window, but finds the police waiting for him outside and is captured. In a dark interrogation room, the young man, the masked thief, is questioned by multiple men. After being roughed up, he is told to sign an ambiguous confession, with only one thing specified. His name, Connor T.L. Game. A woman enters the interrogation room. She introduces herself as Sai Nijima, a public prosecutor trying to solve a complicated and strange case. Sai asks about the other world and stealing hearts. Connor, under the influence of drugs, recalls how his life got to where it is now. His memory drifts to April before he became a phantom thief. Connor is found guilty of a crime he didn't commit and receives a criminal record. He is sent to Tokyo to serve out his probation under the care of Sojiro Sakura, an acquaintance of his parents. Connor dreams of a man named Igor and learns he must rebel against the fate of ruin. He also meets mysterious twins who instruct him to seek rehabilitation. His first morning at Shujin Academy, Connor meets Ryuji Sakamoto. The two wander into a strange castle where a self-declared king almost kills them. Luckily, Connor's persona awakens, and with the help of Morgana, all three manage to escape the castle. At Shujin, rumors circulate that the volleyball coach, Suguru Kamoshida, is having an affair with student An Takamaki. However, his past success leads teachers to turn a blind eye. After finding themselves in a strange castle, Ryuji and Connor are threatened by a king who looks mysteriously like Kamoshida. They later learn this is his shadow, or true self. Within his palace, where the dark thoughts of distorted minds are brought to life, Ryuji's suspicions regarding Kamashita's abuse and sexual harassment are confirmed. Once a star runner on the track team, Ryuji experienced Kamashita's cruelty firsthand, and wants to use what he saw in the palace to expose Kamashita, but tragedy strikes. Unable to cope with Kamashita's sexual harassment, Shiho Suzui, An's best friend, leaks from the school roof, leading An to decide that enough is enough. Morgana then reveal that they can change Kamashita's heart by stealing the source of his desires, the treasure. And so, they return to the palace once again. The group defeats the palace ruler and steals his treasure, triggering the real Kamashita to publicly apologize and turn himself in to the authorities. Realizing they can use their powers to help those who otherwise cannot help themselves, Connor and the others agree to continue their work as phantom thieves. Although they have some concerns about the future, their firm resolve pushes them forward into their lives as Team Laser, the Phantom Thieves of Justice. One day, the Phantom Thieves meet Yusuke Kitagawa, who claims to be the pupil of the great Japanese artist Ichiryesu Matarame. I have no clue how to pronounce that, sorry guys. Upon discovering Matarame has a palace of his own, they try to use Yusuke's obsession with On to learn more. Yusuke, however, vehemently defends Matarame. The Phantom Thieves depend whether it's right to change his heart of a victim who doesn't ask for it. The Phantom Thieves meet Nakanohara, one of Matarame's future pupils. Former pupils. After learning what Matarame is doing to Yusuke, the Phantom Thieves decide to go after Matarame. While searching Matarame's palace for his treasure, Yusuke unexpectedly shows up in the palace and begins to accept the truth about his teacher. Upon confronting Matarame's shadow, Yusuke rejects his mentor awakens his persona, and helps the Phantom Thieves change Matarame's heart. Afterward, the Afterward, Matarame goes on his TV and apologizes. This high-profile change of heart causes the public to believe the Phantom Thieves exist. All the while, a perceptive young man, an equally sharp young woman, watches the news speculates about the Phantom Thieves. On a school trip, Connor and the others meet a young detective named Goro Akechi, who believes the Phantom Thieves stand in the way of justice. Later, Student Council President Makoto Nijima confronts the Phantom Thieves and demands they find this Mafia boss or she'll reveal their secret. The Phantom Thieves learn the name of the Mafia boss, Junya Kaneshiro, but they're unable to find him, so cannot infiltrate his palace. Makoto uses herself as bait to learn Kaneshiro's location, entangling them all into a trap. As a result, they're forced to pay Kaneshiro a hen to a hefty sum. Or pay Kaneshiro a hefty sum, sorry. A guilt-ridden Makoto helps Connor and the others get to Kaneshiro's palace. Inside, her persona awakens, and she helps defeat Shadow Kaneshiro. Shadow Kaneshiro reveals that someone else is entering the palaces, and may be connected to the mental shutdowns and psychotic breakdowns. Could this have something to do with the one with the black mask that Shadow Matarame mentioned? 
Following Kaneshiro's change of heart, the Phantom Thieves see a rapid rise in popularity. This causes the hacker network Medjed to challenge them. The challenge excites the public, but the Phantom Thieves don't know where to begin since Medjed is wholly anonymous. Out of the blue, they receive a message from someone called Alibaba. Alibaba offers to help take Medjed down if the Phantom Thieves change someone's heart. Left with no other choice, the team agrees to the terms. Around this time, Connor learns that Sojiro had taken custody of Futaba, the daughter of his acquaintance, Wakaba Ishiki. Makoto deduces that Futaba is Alibaba, realizing that saving her could let them stand up against Medjet. The Phantom Thieves enter her palace. But despite Futaba's desire to have her heart changed, an entity within the palace tries to prevent that, a monstrous distortion of her mother. Throughout the crucible of emotional duress, Futaba's own persona awakens, and together with the Phantom Thieves, she defeats Wakaba's distortion. After a reawakening, Futaba takes down Medjed's website, and this solves the case in a flash. Thanks to her change of heart, since she's begun looking towards reality. With Medjed gone, the Phantom Thieves see a new surge in popularity. Buoyed by their success, they decide to keep searching for high-profile targets. Believing Wakaba's death to be caused by a mental shutdown, the team begins searching for the person responsible, hoping to increase their popularity. Futaba suggests they steal data from Sai's laptop since she's also looking into the mental shutdowns. Makoto, though hesitant, agrees to do it. While they wait for the data to be analyzed, the team heads to Hawaii on a school trip and discover they have gained international fame. Unfortunately, upon returning home, they learn that Shujin's principal died under suspicious circumstances. From Sai's data, Futaba learns that Akumura Foods CEO Kunikazu Okumura is at the heart of several ongoing investigations. The fan of these discuss whether to change Akumura's heart based solely on public opinion. Things get heated, causing Morgana to run away from home. Connor and the others track Morgana to Akumura's palace, where they find him with the woman called the Beauty Thief. They fail to make peace with Morgana. Looking into Beauty Thief's identity, the team learns she is none other than Haru Akumura, Akumura's daughter. Haru reveals that she wants to give her father a change of heart. After joining the Phantom Thieves, they all return to Akumura's palace. The Phantom Thieves manage to defeat Shadow Akumura and steal his treasure. They depart, waiting for the change of heart to come. The team watches Akumura's press conference while celebrating at Destinyland, but their rivalry is cut short. Akumura suddenly suffers a mental shutdown during the press conference and later dies. The Phantom Thieves, having no part in it, are shocked. The Phantom Thieves are blamed for Akumura's death and their popularity plummets. The police put a 30 million dollar yen, uh, 30 million dollar, 30 million yen bounty on their heads. Despite his vocal opposition to them, Akechi declares the Phantom Thieves are not the culprits behind Akumura's death, but hints that he knows who is. The Phantom Thieves call Akechi with the hope of clearing their name, but he forces them to aid them in his plan to give Sai a change of heart. Accompanied by Akechi, the Phantom Thieves infiltrate Sai and Ijima's palace when inspired by a casino. The Phantom Thieves find and defeat Shadow Sai, however, Connor is arrested in the palace by real world police. As he is arrested, he learns of a traitor in their midst. News of Connor's arrest circulates throughout Tokyo. Connor is taken to an underground interrogation room and rigorously questioned by the police, then by Sai Nijima bringing the story to full circle. As Connor fights the effects of drugs and remains silent about the Phantom Thieves, an assassin sent by the real culprit closes in. The assassin is none other than Gori Akechi himself, who pulls a gun on Connor and kills him. News reports of his death label it as suicide. The ruin Igor warned about back in April seems to have finally arrived. Except Connor didn't die. His death was a carefully constructed fake-out. The fan of these learned to catch he was a traitor by bugging his phone, but agreed to his plan since whoever was worked for could hide a murder. They need to simultaneously prevent Connor's murder and expose Ketchy. The plan was to lure Ketchy to the undistorted police station, police station outside Sai's palace. There, he would kill a fake Connor cognition and think he succeeded. Inside, the police station is indistinguishable from reality, so if someone could let in, they wouldn't know the difference. By having Sai leave Connor's phone on after the interrogation, Futaba could remotely activate the metanav and have Akechi kill a fake Connor. Though Akechi, they learned the name of the person really putting all the strings, Masayoshi Shido, who used Akechi to kill political rivals. Shuzun's principal, Akumura, and even the SIU director had shady ties to Shido. With the truth coming to light, the team focuses on taking down Shido. Having fooled Akechi, Connor goes into hiding to prevent Masayoshi Shido from learning he's alive and well. Meanwhile, Shido's popularity soars. 
Connor hears his voice during a speech and becomes convinced that Shido is the one who framed him. The Phantom Thieves infiltrate Shido's palace to change his heart, but are stopped by Akechi, who reveals he's behind the mental shutdowns. Akechi finally reveals his revenge scheme, but the Phantom Thieves manage to overpower him and promise to force the change of heart in Shido. The Phantom Thieves hijack the giant screen TVs in Japan and pull off their biggest calling card stunt, revealing they're unharmed and accusing Shido of his crimes. Phantom Thief Fever is reinvigorated. The Phantom Thieves manage to defeat Shido's shadow in a last ditch effort. He tries to kill them by destroying his own palace, but ultimately fails. Masayoshi Shido finally has a change of heart and confesses everything in a countrywide broadcast. The Phantom Thieves believe society will improve. The Phantom Thieves ride the high of their own accomplishment, certain that support of Shido will plummet into the wake of his confession. But things take an unexpected turn. The general public refuses to accept the crimes of Masayoshi Shido and begin to become oblivious to the Phantom Thieves' existence. At a loss, the Phantom Thieves and Sai reflect on their next move. Since Shido used the metaverse, building a case against his crimes would be hard. Within the public's opinion is a stalemate, and the Phantom Thieves must quickly act to find a solution. But they can't change every heart individually. Morgana then remembers that Mementos, everyone's palace, has a treasure, and stealing it could cause the masses to come to their senses. But to do so would dissolve the metaverse itself, which would be the end of the Phantom Thieves. Dismayed that they'll be unable to change hearts again, but certain of their convictions, the team goes to Mementos to do one last heist. In Mementos, the team finally hides its treasure, the Holy Grail. However, by the will of the masses, it is transformed into a malevolent god. The Phantom Thieves are defeated, and the Grail begins to merge Mementos with reality. The team awakens to see Shibuya distorted as they helplessly begin to fade. It is revealed that the malevolent god had been masquerading as Igor and stringing Connor along in its game, one he never stood a chance at winning. The MetaNav and Metaverse were both tools used by the malevolent god to prove the foolishness of humanity to Connor. Connor is saved from death when the Velvet Room twins merge into Lavenza. The god, believing it has already won, returns to the real Igor and leaves. Connor restores the Phantom Thieves' willpower and the team gathers in the Velvet Room for Igor's explanation. Before being imprisoned, Igor gave his remaining power to a messenger tasked with finding a human that could become the trickster. Morgana, no longer uncertain about himself, leads the Phantom Thieves to face their final opponent. So begins the final battle against the malevolent god, with the fate of the world hanging in the balance. Carrying the hopes of the masses in their shoulders, the Phantom Thieves beat the evil god Yeldabaoth. As the Shido case approaches its end, Akechi appears and volunteers to turn himself in. After the Phantom Thieves' final mission, Morgana, believed to be lost, reappears as a cat. Sai Nijima updates Connor at the Shido incident and clearing his own criminal record. However, after the new year, something strange happens. Futaba's late mother, Wikabe Ishiki, turns up and still living. And Morgana has turned into a human. No one but Connor is the wiser. Akechi then reappears, apparently released as innocent. Like Connor, he too takes notice of the unusual situation. They join forces to figure out what's happened. At this point, Connor receives a call from Kazumi, who reports at the palace they'd entered before he has reappeared. The three then decide to meet up outside the palace. The leader, the traitor, and the rejecter of the Phantom Thieves. They enter the mysterious palace as one in search of clues that could shed light on the bizarre situation. Maruki awaits them inside the palace. He is the one that caused this false reality. To help people in reality, he used his cognitive science research to create a world where everyone's wishes came true. And Kazumi was one of them. She's actually Sumire, Kazumi's sister. Because she blamed herself for Kazumi's death, Sumire wished that she could be Kazumi to realize her sister's unfulfilled dreams. But Sumire isn't the only one. The Phantom Thieves are also being deceived by Maruki's ideal reality. Even after seeing this, Connor and Akechi go back to the palace to destroy the world Maruki created. However, Sumire, who wants to be Kazumi, doesn't want that to happen. With the help of the other Phantom Thieves, Connor and Akechi are able to defeat Sumire's out-of-control persona. Lavenza notified Connor that Maruki possesses a persona that has the power of actualization. By using Mementos and his power, he is able to twist reality. However, this only happened because the Phantom Thieves, who held the hopes of the public, wished for such a reality to occur. Upon hearing this, the Phantom Thieves are shocked. Although they stopped the fusion of Mementos and reality once before, 
Marky's actualization is causing the fusion to occur again. With a mouth until the deadline, they decide to change Marky's heart. When they enter the palace, they encounter Sumire. She has decided to see herself as who she really is and help the Phantom Thieves fight Maraki. They all work together towards the treasure. On the night of February 2nd, having secured the route, Connor denies Maraki, who tells him to accept his reality and gives him the calling card. How this final battle, the fight for other beliefs, turn out? I guess you'll have to watch my videos to find out. 